Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Tea with Publicity, which is presented by my favorite tequila hard seltzer, Mamitas. Mamitas is made with real tequila and comes in four delicious flavors, mango, pineapple, paloma, and lime. I feel like I always say it in that order, too. Um, I will be pre-gaming my live show with Mamitas, obviously, my drink of choice. And I hope you guys are too, and I can't wait to meet you guys there. So get a little Mamitas buzz on. If you don't know where to get it, you can get it by ordering on GoPuff, or you can find it on drinkmamitas.com to get their variety pack. Let's get into today's show. Let's get into today's show. So I mentioned my live show. We sold out. Woo! I'm so excited. So I don't know if I was like doubting myself, but part of me was like, am I doing one too soon after my last in the same city? And like, I kind of knew the tea tribe would sell it out, but you know, you start having like a little bit of imposter syndrome where I'm like, is this, am I going to pull this off? So I was so excited because I really hadn't promoted this new this like second show as much as I did my first show because I've kind of just like realized that people don't want to commit to plans two months in advance so I really went hard like the week before and that was like all my promotion was just like the week before and then you guys sold it out so I am so excited to meet you guys I know a lot of people that don't live in the New York City area or aren't traveling in for the live show message me being like will we be able to hear this as a podcast or whatever Um, The answer is no, but what we're going to do this time is I want to vlog the entire experience. So I will take you guys along when I'm like behind the scenes, getting my hair, my makeup done, preparing. Gia will be taking some footage there. So you guys will see like overall like clips and like get like the essence for the show. Um, And like the good, the good bits will be in there and some of the behind the scenes stuff. And um, yeah, that will be your inside look. So I'm really excited. Um, I have a few things I want to talk about at the upfront of this episode. We do have an interview today with Leah Mob. It is short and sweet. And I just said Leah Mob. That's her Instagram name. Her name's Leah McSweeney from Real Housewives of New York. Um, it's short and sweet, but juicy. I asked her about her friendship with Julia Fox, ask if she has run in the same circles as Anna Delvey. And um, yeah, she's really cool. She's super chill. And you'll hear that. Also, what she thinks about the Real Housewives of New York changing from um they're kind of like changing direction going they're scrapping the OG Real Housewives and they are making two new franchises so one will be um OGs and one will be newcomers and we'll get into that in a bit and then we will also do the Ask Alyssa where we answer your advice questions and spill the tea last night was the Grammys there's some tea to be spilled from there not much but there are a lot of things I want to talk about like a new show that I am obsessed with I want to talk about Siesta Key some Rob Kardashian Black China Tiger stuff Temptation Island um best Hibley show of the moment and we'll get into some of that a little bit later but first I want to tell you guys a little bit about what I've been up to, catch you up on my life as I do. So I've been telling you guys a little bit about how I've been like really good on my like spiritual journey. So whenever I like get re in touch with my spiritual side, the weirdest things happen. And I don't know if I'm just like tapped in more, (coughs) excuse me, um, So I was out to dinner last week with Erica and Kate, my two friends, who were at my last live show on stage with me. And I was telling them, we were just like talking about life, and I was telling them about this woman, Laura, who um, is a psychic, and she's come on my podcast. I've talked about her before, because she came on my podcast, and then the last time I brought her up, she texted me. And then this time I was talking about her again and I was telling them like, well, Laura told me this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I was talking a lot to them about like mindful eating and um, just being aware of intuitiveness. And two days later, I wake up and I get a text from Laura. That's funny. And it's a video link of her doing a tour of her refrigerator talking about mindful eating. And she's like, I thought you would find this interesting. That is so weird. No, like it's beyond, like you can't deny this stuff. 
And I was like, I was just thinking about every time. It's the second I talk about her. Yeah. And she is like, um, I don't know. I feel so like blessed because I talked about this the last time, but she has such a cult like following and she's really hard to get in touch with. And the fact that she like continues to reach out to me and like see something in me, it's so nice. And she was like, let's have like an intuitive strategy session. Like come over, we'll drink wine and like we will like plan out your future because she's like wants to help me like strategically figure out like what my next next moves are and like she's like I see some stress and she she said um something is about to really take off that you can monetize Hmm. and I don't know what that is but like it's also weird because I'd been writing down in my morning manifestations I felt like for a really long time I was really stuck um on TikTok at the same like amount of growth Mm. and I know that probably sounds silly to people who don't care about followers but for me that equates to like podcast listeners and it directly correlates to my line of work so obviously you want to continue to grow to grow the show to make more money whatever and I'd been writing down in my morning like manifestations like I'm gonna explode again like it I'm, like the next wave is gonna come like it's gonna I just like had this feeling like I'm gonna start gaining a lot of traction and for her to be like something's about to happen that's what the uh, another psychic told me right before I got this job interesting he was like something's like about to explode and I didn't know what it was. And then like a month later, my TikTok blew up. And then I DM Dave. And then I got the job. Hmm. So like, I don't know what's coming. <laughs> but like, I'm just feeling really inspired and really in touch. And I can't wait to go to her house and like workshop my life. That's really nice of her to be like, I want to help you. And I said to uh, my friend, I was like, it's kind of, this sounds weird, but it's kind of like affirming to be like, oh, someone thinks I'm a good person. Yeah. Because she wouldn't just be helping some, like, schmuck. Right. Like, it kind of makes me feel good because I'm like, oh, you see something in me. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah. Um, I know. It's crazy. And I said this last time, but people pay her, like, $15,000 an hour for her time. What? And she's like, hey, come over. Damn, I'm that's like, so I feel, nice of her. I know. And I literally met her sitting right here. Like, yeah. I just feel like we had, like, a bond. Right. And... It's just, like, my mind is blown because, like, my parents, my dad doesn't believe in all of this, like, m- like hippy-dippy, like, metaf- manifesting stuff. But when I told him that I mentioned her and then she texted me and he was like, okay, you can't deny that. Like, yeah. that's really crazy. Yeah, that's fate. It's so insane. So I'm feeling, like, really good. I think the things that have been working for me to stay present, um, I've been meditating, I'd say – four days a week five days a week I'm not gonna say seven because I don't think I've been doing it fully seven but I'm not holding myself to that standard like I'm like if I remember if I want to great Mm -hmm. I'm only doing five minute meditations um I put my legs up like I meditate and I don't really like know if it's helping that much but I'm just trying to really stay like aware and um I've been doing that I've been journaling like I said every morning I've been writing down three things that I'm letting go, three things that I'm manifesting, and those changed based on my mood. And yeah, it's just been like nice. Like I'm on this like, I'm back on this like spiritual journey. And I really like being that way because I feel like way more centered in myself. Like I just feel like I operate better. Everything, like my friendships, my eating, my exercise, like literally my sleeping, like everything just functions properly when I'm in in alignment um so that's been really good and I ordered oh my gosh I want to tell you guys so I ordered this book on Amazon it hasn't come in yet but let me look up the name of it I keep getting served TikTok ads for it and like I'm such a sucker for ads I've been ordering so much stuff um just based on ads but basically it's a book where you each page has a different prompt and you then burn the page after you finish like complete the prompt so okay I'm gonna get you guys the name it's called it's called burn after writing the international bestseller so it like is a pink book and it has like a a thing of matches on it that says burn after writing and then the pages have um like prompts um let me read one to you the song for opening credits of like the movie of my life would be then you fill it in 
um, that's not even a deep one, but three things I need to let go of, you write them down. My future in three words, you write them down. And then I guess with each page, you like burn the page. Mm. So like, I just got it. I'm like, I need to get this. I don't know if I'm going to be like in my apartment, like starting a fire. But I was going to say, it sounds like a fire hazard. <laughs> I need to have like a burning ritual on my roof. That reminds me of um, Wreck This Journal. Oh, I you need ever that heard too. Of that? No, but it's, it sounds similar. Yeah, it's very it's it's similar. It's like every page is like, um, like paint this page red, and then it's like scratch this. Like it's like just uh, I think it's just supposed to like help you get it out. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I totally yeah. So I'm really excited. So I made my best friend Jill order it because she likes this stuff too. So maybe we'll just like have a burning ceremony. Also, it helps me to kind of do this stuff with a friend. Yeah, I get that. You know, um, and then the other thing I ordered last night which I got from a TikTok ad is translucent um, sticky notes. They're translucent for no reason other than they look cooler than like opaque ones. But I saw someone that like you write like your, um, you write your, what's it called? Not manifestations. Like your, what's the things that you say to yourself? In affirmations. The, affirmations. You write your affirmations on them and you like stick them mm. like around your house. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is cool. So I ordered those too. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like hold me to it. But I'm just feeling like I'm feeling really zen these days. <laughs> so I had to tell you guys that story about Laura. Um, I did go home this weekend. I spent a lot of time with my sister. She's nine months pregnant, which is crazy. Um, and yeah, it was just nice to... I slept at her place one night. Then I slept at my parents. Well, my grandma's because they're still with her. Um, my grandma's one night. And I went to a baby shower. Like, it was just very much like weekend of family. Mm. One thing I've noticed about myself, let me ask you this because I'm curious. <laughs> I feel as though I'm such a – I'm such a – outgoing person in one regard like I'm a really big people person and I like talking and I love having like deep and meaningful conversations but I kind of notice and my sister helped me kind of come to this I don't enjoy like small talk sometimes and unless I'm talking about something like a show or something I'm passionate about but I get really drained by people's energy like so so drained to the point where when I'm just like with people all weekend I just want to go home and be by myself yeah and I'm like is this because I've been single for so long or am I just an extroverted introvert uh like, do you yeah. feel that way yes I totally get. I think I'm a, I'm in the same boat extroverted introvert like I like talking to people and I like meeting new people but I think like one of my most toxic traits is that like I don't really like put myself out there to meet people because mm. like I just don't want to have small talk that's how I'm just like it's there's just no point because we're just it's gonna be the same thing over and over again like hey like oh where are you from oh where'd you go to school oh nice that sounds like a great school what made you want to go there blah 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 it's like where is this going I know that we're not gonna like hang out later in life so it's like why (laughs) it sounds so bad I feel the same way and I actually uncovered this a while ago with my therapist because I was telling her about like something and she she was like I just don't think you like small talk. Yeah. And I'm like, I I don't feel like I do even small. With my best, best friends, like, nothing is surface level. Mm. Like, uh, we're like, what are your demons? What are, you know what I mean? Like, we get so deep. Yeah. I was even watching, which I'll talk about Temptation Island in the Spill the Tea section. But I was watching Temptation Island, and one of the couples had been dating for seven years. And she was like, I don't even know how my boyfriend feels about like his family, like something very basic. And I was like, you've been dating seven years and you don't know this. Like that would never be me in a relationship because I start dating someone for like two dates and I'm like, tell me about your deep rooted family trauma. <laughs> like I need, I ask those questions cause I need to know. Yeah. So I don't know what it is, but I think sometimes like going to a lot of events or just like going to like dinners or whatever it may be, they just don't, fill me they just drain my energy yeah I mean every time I go out to dinner or something like that I feel the same way by the time I'm done I'm just like like I literally just want to go home and not talk to anyone like I don't it's like it feels like it's like a bad mood but it's just like total it's energy energy yes yeah it's weird though because it goes two ways like 
it I think it depends if I feel fulfilled from the conversation. Because yeah. sometimes I go out to dinner with my friends. Yeah, like, and, like if it's like my close friends, yeah. like, then that's fun. But if I'm going out to dinner with like, I don't know, like random, not random like people, a business but people dinner. I'm just like not really close with. Yeah. And then I have like a few friends that I am close with. It's just like, not torture, but I it's, just, right. it's just like not fun at a certain point. It just gets old. I wonder if other people feel see some people don't like to be alone and they just thrive off being with other yeah. people but i just don't think i'm that way and i even think back to i like having alone time same it's, it's like it's just like people annoy me a lot <laughs> so it's just like and I, I i used to make this joke all the time at school so i had 13 roommates oh my god and i would always, like we'd go to these parties and i would just i would never like really talk to anyone mm. besides like my friends and like my close guy friends and I'd just be like, I have enough friends. Yeah, like, like I, don't I don't need. Don't, I don't need more friends. <laughs> and my and my close friends would be like, gee, like, that's like not a good way to look at life. But it's like, I have 13 great friends. And then I have my home friends. Mm-hmm. What? And now I have work friends. It's like, what more could I ask for? I'm so grateful to have all these friends. I don't really need any more. Yeah, I, I'm, okay, I'm similar. It's too stressful. I'm similar in a sense, and then also, like, because I do get deep with people, sometimes I meet a new friend, and then I learn so much about them, and I feel so connected to yeah. them so soon if they're able to, like, meet me there. Yeah, yeah. And then there's other times where I'm just, like, we've talked about this, but I put friends in buckets where I'm like, that's my party friend. So like mm. they fill that void. That's my work friend. They fill that void. That's yeah. my, like you kind of like seg, like separate your friends into these categories. Definitely. And like, even like, for example, my last live show at the after party, that was a different thing. I wasn't, my social battery wasn't drained. It was like charged. Hmm. <laughs> like I could not sleep for three days after it yeah. because I met so many people and I was like my adrenaline like I was so excited and happy and like filled that I almost couldn't sleep because I was like wired yeah so it's like I could go one of two ways but yeah it's interesting I just noticed that this weekend and then my mom got mad at me because I was saying how I've always said this so I don't know why this is like new news um, and I went to the baby shower and I have to say it was like actually one of the best baby showers I've ever been to. It was like so beautiful and I knew everyone there. So this doesn't, this, what I'm about to say doesn't have to go to this, but generally speaking, I don't like organized events. <laughs> and my mom was like, you're, she's like, what do you like? You like, you hate everything. And I'm like, no, I don't hate everything. But like, I've always said, I don't love like weddings and showers and because I feel like This is like so against the social norm, but I feel like everyone puts you in a room and they're like, okay, have fun now. Right. Instead of you just naturally having fun, it's like you're being, it's like forced fun is how I feel. Yeah. I guess it depends on like, I feel like with weddings. Unless it's friends, like best friends. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I, I understand that. Like maybe with like work. Like, for example, like the work party, like you're putting everyone that we work with together. Mm. So it's kind of like, all right, everyone get along and meet each other and and have fun. But with weddings, like, I feel like that's a curated group of people that you like. It's the. But then also you have to like, it's like friends of friends and friends from school, friends from work. No, it's it's like they all kind of have to like get along. It's for me. It's the being like, okay, dance now. (laughs) <laughs> do you know what i'm yes, saying yes yes it's like it's not natural it is not that's why i want to have a destination wedding because i want everyone to be on vacation and i want it to just feel like a party i don't want to have to be like all right sit down speech stand up dance sit down stand up stand. like to me like weddings are such forced fun like you rarely unless it's your best friend getting married have like the time of your life at someone's wedding yeah I don't know. This is just my opinion. Again, no, I strong get that. opinion. I get that. But I've always said this, and I'm like, that's why, like, when I have a wedding, like, I don't want to stop people for dinner. I want, like, food stands or, like, past hors d'oeuvres all night, like, tons of food so the party doesn't stop. Like, I just don't like the whole, okay, now it's time to have fun. Now go back to sitting. Now time to dance again, but you're so full. I can't. So, I don't know. So, my mom's like, you're just a grunt. Like, she's yeah. like, you're a Grinch. I'm like, let me live, uh, <laughs> mom. Okay. 
Um, we'll get into the interview now with Leah McSweeney. That was my little rant. If you're new here, I promise you I'm not insane. I'm just, um, I'm growing. I'm evolving. <laughs> I'm a little crazy. Um, okay, here's the interview with Leah. We will come back with the Ask Alyssa, and then we will spill some tea. Hello, everyone. I am here with Leah McSweeney. Leah, welcome to the Hi. Pod. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you're here. I think I think you're my first New York housewife that oh I've ever Oh, my God. Had. I've done Jersey. I'm I've, honored. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're my first, which is weird because, like, I'm here in New York. Yeah, so it's you not would that think... weird considering who the other ones are. Yeah, it's so true. Actually, I filmed a scene with Ramona once. What? And it didn't air. For what? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's crazy. So I forgot about that. So I... Was a publicist, okay. hence the name publicity. Right. And um, I did like social media consulting. And my friend Jordan Veroy, he was on Summer House for a little bit. Okay. He was helping Ramona when she launched her Ageless, her skincare oh my line. God. And he was like, We need someone to come film to like give her social media advice. <gasps> and it was me. <laughs> I love that. I would love to see that lost footage somewhere. I know. And I was telling her, I'm like, You got to market to these types of people. You got to do this. You got to do that. She's it was wild, at her house. Right? Yeah, fully, fully wild. Fully and wild. just like the same energy off camera as same on camera. Yeah, same. <laughs> she doesn't change. Wait, so New York Housewives, they're getting a shakeup that they just announced. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to do, I actually think it's much needed. So it's going to be like a newer version with newer people recasted and then the version with like the OGs. Yes. Where do you think you fall in that? I don't know. I don't know either. Where do you think? Like, I'd where like would you want to see me? No. Interesting. Well, because I think... You're the second person that said that. Well, you're younger than the rest of them. And also, I think it would be nice to have some roots on the new season yeah. with people that have been on it before. Right. Not just totally rando. Like, yeah. New. Yeah. Um, but then I'm also, like, conflicted because I'm like, but I, like, I love Lou, you know? Yeah. And I, like, love Dorinda if Dorinda comes back or whatever. I think so she'll come back because... The fans are just yeah. obsessed. Um, and I like fighting with Ramona. <laughs> but, you know, but also the new, but I've been, look, I've been saying that there needs to be a shakeup and new blood on the show, like, for a while. And I think it's a great idea. 100%. Also, ironically, I don't know why I did this or what even made me do this, but, like, a week or two weeks before the news came out, I made a TikTok saying who I would recast for The Real Housewives of New York. And it was, like, me and all my friends in my friend group. Like, <laughs> all, like, <laughs> hey, this, like, maybe in, pitch it to Andy. <laughs> but, like, what are the chances? That's I funny. was like, that's, like, weird timing. Yeah, that is weird. Maybe you're psychic a little bit. No, I am definitely a little. Right? <laughs> I swear I get, like, weird things. But I just did that. And then, um, like, a few months ago, someone started following me from casting and I was like come on <laughs> but I'm not married like I know Doesn't, I know so most people aren't I. but don't I need Who some from casting it was like a Real Housewives of New York casting group and they were following like a bunch of people that I know in New York wow but dun, dun, dun. also like I get that you have a daughter like I I don't have any kind of family here I'm so single like mm. what would they like, I wonder if they'll do housewives that are young or if they're going to do, like, single, like, entrepreneurial women. Right. Like, what would you like to see the reboot kind of look like? What would I like to see? Yeah, it? like, what Like what do you I think mean, it means? I mean, I just, like, want some, like, crazy fun bitches that are, yeah. like, wild. Yeah, that aren't scared to kind of just, like, I think it needs to be more eclectic, too. Yeah, totally. Eclectic, of course. Different um, types of jobs, different types of interests. Yeah. You know, all of that. Because that's what New York is. It's like this big melting pot. It really is. It's not just like these Upper East Side moms. It's not, exactly. At all. No. But you're a downtown girl. I'm a downtown girl. So you grew up in the city. Yeah. Um, I think I heard, and then you moved to Connecticut for a few years. Exactly. And then back in the city. Yeah. So... You're coming out with a book, and I'm assuming I have a copy on my desk. I need to read it, but it's detailing all of that. It's, your whole yes, life story. Exactly. Oh, my God. What was it like digging those things up? <clears throat> oh, well, it was interesting. Um, I didn't know how, like, like emotionally taxing it would be to, like, mm -hmm. talk about. It's therapy. It's therapy, you know, but there was so much, like, most of my teenage years were spent, like, doing drugs and, like, being sent to rehab and, like, being kicked out of my house and just a lot of painful shit, you know? I mean, obviously there's fun memories, like, in there, too, because um, whatever, doing drugs sometimes is fun, but mainly it was very chaotic and it was really 
like destructive. So having to bring it up and having to conjure it up and talk about it again um, gave me maybe like a new, also like a new perspective on it because I just haven't mm. thought about it in a while. It's not something I think about on my day to day, even though I think I do subconsciously carry it yeah. with me yeah. and forward into this life or this new you know, where I'm at now. Yeah, it's like even if you're not subconsciously thinking about it, it's still probably weighing on Part you. Of who I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, digging things up like that, hindsight's 2020. It is. Don't you feel like, uh, even me, I'm like, I look at things from a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and I'm like, wow, I just have such a different perspective it's on totally it now. Totally different. And I've been doing like Reiki healing to like try mm-hmm. to like kind of get rid of like that energy that I think I still sometimes carry around like I carry that teenager with me you know Mm, that's interesting yeah like the teenager comes out sometimes like watching myself on the show too I can see it like I'm like oh there she is do you think watching yourself has helped you pinpoint things that you need to work on oh absolutely yes I mean that's what it can do if you let it if you are like open and self-aware it's probably so hard though like just watching back things that you're not proud of or things I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's hard to – a lot of people want to make changes, but I think it's another thing to actually work on yourself and put it into practice because it takes a long time. You don't just, like, work on yourself and within a month. You're like, I'm new. It takes I years. have literally been working on myself yeah. since probably 15. I mean, that's when I went to my first rehab, and, and now it's changed, obviously, so many different times. But I'll just never not be working on myself. I feel the same way. And now when I'm dating, I'm like – if I'm dating someone and they're not open to working on themselves, that's a really big turn off mm, to me. Yep. Because yep. you want someone that is like, yeah, maybe I, maybe they haven't done the work yet, but they're open to doing it. Yeah. Or they're just like, have that self-awareness. I don't know. At least for me. I'm like. Oh, yeah. No, I need someone who's spiritual. Like, totally. I need someone who's spiritual and self-aware. So you just um, converted to Judaism. And what made you decide to like take that leap honestly it was such a long time coming like this has been something that I've talked about toyed with the idea of since I'm like maybe in my teen years Mm. um there were obviously certain moments that like reading the book the red tent that made me really interested in Judaism working in the garment district having business partners who were Jewish having the rabbis there all the time Mm. learning about all the holidays like there were certain things that would bring me closer and closer like writing an article about anti-Semitism like years ago, like just different things, you know, Mm -hmm. until finally in February, 2020, I was at a dinner party and two of my Jewish friends were there and I'm like, I'm converting, I'm doing it. And they're like, are you serious? Do it. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. You need to go to Israel and have like a big, I've I've been to Israel, but I need to go back. I feel like you need to have like a spiritual awakening. I need to have another spiritual. Yes. And going to Israel was another moment where I was like, I need to convert. A lot of my friends are Jewish and they say it's like so powerful to go there. It's powerful no matter who you are. Because it's such a, I mean, it's literally the birthplace of like our, the three biggest religions. And you know, these, I mean, it's, it's incredible. That's really cool. And also when you go through programs like AA or therapy or whatever, aren't they like very faith based as well? Very. Because I was listening to, ironically, a podcast yesterday and someone was talking about their journey with sobriety Mm -hmm. and they were saying how it made them way more in touch with their religion going through that whole process. So I, I it doesn't surprise me that you felt like comfort you found religion throughout that completely and also even when I was younger going to Catholic school I loved praying I loved the idea of a god you know and Mm. higher power and um I think even doing drugs was spiritual for me for a while like certain drugs Mm -hmm. like people obviously do shrooms and whatever else they're doing now like with shamans like ayahuasca but like I was doing that on my own not ayahuasca but like when I would like get into a k-hole I like went to other places and I felt like when I came back I had like gone to another realm of the universe so it was opening up my mind in a lot of ways now they're doing giving special k to people who um ketamine injections people that have like um ptsd Depression, right and ptsd yeah. and things like that also i know everyone's like microdosing shrooms microdosing and it's which like, i don't see i tried doing that i don't think it does anything i was gonna say i don't know i've never tried it but like i would go on one of those trips i think but part of me is also like yeah, I'm not. would i freak out yeah i'm like i hate like hallucinogenic same i, yeah, I really I don't think i would like it. like i've done a lot of them and i never 
I kept doing them, even though I would always have a terrible <laughs> hate it. and insane experience. Part of me is like, yeah, I'm open to it. And then part of me is like, I would want to jump off. Like, I just know myself and I right? wouldn't trust like, myself. And you might jump off a building. Some people get freaked out and do that yes, and then they fucking die. It's scary. Exactly. That's why I'm like, I, you need to be in a concealed environment. <laughs> yes, a padded room <laughs> with a shaman. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't trust myself. Uh, especially living in New York. Like, oh my God, it's so scary. Don't I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so some of your like early days in the city, first of all, I feel like you are one of those people that's just like a New York fixture. You've like had so many experiences, like having a fashion line, um, running in the same circles as like Julia Fox. And yeah, what, everyone loves to bring that up. Love it's so it. funny. Well, my next question that I didn't hear anyone ask you, did you cross paths with Anna Delvey? So, you know what, um, someone's asked, people have asked me this like off, like, you know, no, yeah. someone's like, did you know her? You seem like you would have known her. Were we at the same parties? Like, yes, we must have been. Yeah. But I don't remember her. Yeah. I remember I Billy McFarland, the fire Festival so guy. So I don't remember him. I don't remember him. He, they, they used I think to he's too tr- douchey for, like. I wouldn't hang out with him. I was yeah, like, no, he's a loser. Yeah. I would always say that because. Like, he seems really, like, horrible. Well, they would try to get me to buy his credit card thing oh and go to his, like, loft. And right, I was like, loft. no, this guy's a. I don't know why. Just in my gut, I was like, mm. you can just tell he's a tool. Yeah. Right? But I'm like, we've definitely, uh, same with me. Like, I've probably been in the same room with little these dick people. energy. <laughs> he has little dick energy. Yes, 100%. Okay, that's funny. I was wondering. I'm like, because I know Julia's friends with Anna. Yeah. And I was like, no, but hmm, I didn't. That could Mm-mm. be a cool part. Imagine that's like the recasting of The Housewives. <laughs> I already, I, me and Julia talked about it on her podcast. She's like five years. I could totally. I like, okay. She would be fantastic. She would be so good. Also, I'm a huge fan of her now. I mean, how could you not be? I know. She just owns who she is and I really I love her that. going to the Vanity Fair party with red eyes. I don't know. <laughs> like, I want to just make my eyes red now and like show up to Roni filming just like with red bloodshot <laughs> eyes. How and, does she do that? And people make it cool. could say whatever they want about her, but she just like owns it and that's what and I guess love what? she doesn't give a fuck she really does it she's been the same I've known her for so long this is when she first started dating Kanye and people were like oh my god I'm like dude Kanye doesn't even know who, he, who he's fucking with she could run <laughs> yeah. circles around Kanye I totally get that energy she could from run her. circles around Kanye and the Kardashians trust me yeah because she's like a hustler she knows how to like when you when you come up in an environment like that, yeah. it's like you see some shit. And you're also in circles in New York where you're rubbing elbows with celebrities. She has a different kind of intuition. Yeah. It's just like, eh. Yeah. But that's who I kind of see being on the show. Like these interesting people from New York that have like really cool backgrounds. Yeah. That's very cool for Roni. That would be. I mean, I hope they want to do that. You know, it would be awesome. Yeah, I agree. Like they just. Need a- I I uh, I suggested Cat Marnell a couple of years ago. I've I've suggested I'm- a bunch of cool people. Yeah, so we'll but see. you know what it is with networks. I feel I feel that everyone wants to change, but then they always go back to what they know. Yeah, because they're too scared to actually make like a huge plunge. Yeah, whereas like you just got to commit to like shaking things up. Yeah. So- or there needs to be a no- new show where it's like cool ass bitches in New York City. One hundred percent. Because, yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. People well, were saying Azealia Banks and Julia needed me. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> well, they were giving us all the drama. They were giving us fucking drama. Azealia Banks though, would carry the show because she just has so many opinions. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about mental health because it's something I – so I talk about mental health all the time on the podcast I talk about going to therapy and this and that you've obviously like gone up and down with your mental health like yeah. where are you today today I'm in a really good place oh good <clears throat> um but it wasn't always like this and you know last year losing my grandmother mm. um was a huge like took a major toll on me filming during the pandemic while grieving my grandmother took a major toll on me it took me a long time to recover just from and then also the obviously the um people not liking the the season you know and then like yeah yeah, kind of turning on me and being just like harassed constantly on social media regarding how I was dealing with my grandmother's death left me gutted to the point where I was like I need help like I I, this is horrible you know like I need to process this like this is so bad Mm -hmm. um 
I'm in a good place now. So what do you do when you need help? Like, do you isolate? Do you go to therapy? Do you take a trip? Like, what does that look like for you to, like, regroup? It depends. Um, You know, it depends. I obviously, like, have a psychiatrist. I have a therapist. You know, sometimes you have to go somewhere for Mm -hmm. a week. Like, it just depends. You know, I think it's being... Being honest, though, about where you're at mentally is very important, you know, and I think I was trying, I was pretending that I was okay, and Mm -hmm. I was distracting myself from really, like, the grief that I was, like, not dealing with, and I was trying to run away from it. That makes sense. But like I said, sometimes you don't realize you're going through a hard time until you're in a better place. And then you're like, oh, wow, I wasn't okay last year. Yeah, right. But when you're in it, it's hard to decipher and get yourself on track. Like I know I knew I felt like shit, but I also like wasn't like I was just, you know, going and going and going. Also, like last the last season when we filmed, like I was dealing with so many mental health issues and I even like added new medication. But it wasn't something that like the producers like followed so it didn't mm. pan out so it's not like I and I I did talk about it on camera but not everything if it's not a storyline it's getting cut out right so my mental yeah. health wasn't a storyline so you're not gonna hear about me trying Wellbutrin and it being terrible because I did it I tried it while I was in quarantine because uh, Sonia exposed me to COVID or whoever exposed mm-hmm. me to COVID you know what I mean like but um it is what it is. I think that any time that you come out of something, you end up stronger in the long run, even if it yeah. sucked. Yeah, you learn. You learn. You absolutely learn. It is – it can't be easy being on TV and watching these things back. And how do you, being a mom, like make sure that your daughter focuses on her mental health and stuff? Like that so, must be challenging. Yeah. My daughter, you know what? Like, thank God, like, knock on wood, hasn't had any depression or anxiety issues. So um, we have a really open dialogue. I'm always like, do you feel like you need to talk to anyone? Because I know it's weird. I'm on TV. Our life mm-hmm. is different than mm-hmm. it used to be. And maybe, I don't know if people say shit to you at school or whatever, you know. And she's like, no, I'm fine, Mom. I'm not <laughs> like you. Like, you're oh like God. and thank god you're not thank, yeah i'm like thank god for me because yeah. i couldn't deal with that like yeah. i can deal with another me you know yeah. um she's very grounded my daughter she's very grounded she's very pragmatic well because she sees the way you're resilient yeah and it's it's i think the more open your parents are the more you're exposed to and the less like you could identify things totally like i feel like my parents were like trying to like hide like the fact that my dad was depressed or like whatever and it's something I'm so honest about like my daughter Mm -hmm. knows I'm like going to my AA meetings I'm on a zoom AA meeting she hears it like Mm -hmm. you know she knows I'm like trying a new medication out like for my depression and anxiety you know like she's very aware and like I discuss it with her it's just generational I think it's so generational because like my family's old school Italian and It's not We're even old school Italian and Irish. Yeah. So. It's not even like they purposefully try to like put stuff under the rug. It's just like they were learned not to yeah. even address it. So exactly. then it just with every generation, I just think it gets better. I, I hope so. I, I pray. <laughs> I like, well, because we're going to be open with our kids and then our kids exactly. will be even more open. And they're, then they're going to fix the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so hopefully it's like it has to start somewhere. So that's why it's great that you're open with that stuff yeah. because she knows it's comfortable than if she's in a situation where she can come to she you. She always talk to me. Yep. That's so she cute. She knows that. And you were a mom at, what, 24? Mm-hmm. And I think... I had no idea what I was doing. Oh. Yeah, obviously. I wouldn't expect you... Also, being a mom in the city, mm-hmm. like, at 24, I would... I, I was so... I'm 31, and I'm like, I can't even imagine. I saw this TikTok. I was dying. It was like, <laughs> it was like, um, I'm I'm still scared of um, like being a teenager, like a, having um, being a teen mom, and I'm 31, and I'm like literally <laughs> same. <laughs> like, I, why do I feel like I'm a kid right now? <laughs> I think we always feel like we're kids. Like yeah. my mom says she still feels like a kid. Is that just, like, within us? Yeah. Like, I think it's supposed to be that way. I know. But it's definitely weird when you're parenting and you're like, I'm a kid. How am I taking care of a kid? Because I feel like that all the time. Yes. I'm like, I don't know when my life is going to switch and I'm just going to feel like an adult. Maybe never. (laughs) Never. Never, never. (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, Leah, it was so nice having you. So nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Okay, guys, we are back for Ask Alyssa. G and I will do our best to give you guys some advice. Um, Here is a good one. 
And it says, Dear Alyssa, I know you're the manifest slash vision board queen, and I thought you might be able to give some insight to my dilemma. I am married, but we have been having some issues. And to be honest, I have been regretting ever since getting married. On New Year's, I made a vision board and really took the time to reflect on what I want in my life slash future, and I made a whole section for my marriage. It has words like connect, listen, communicate, building memories, higher ground, thanks, and all of that. All the things that I felt were missing in my life and my relationship that I wanted to work on, manifest, and achieve this year. But currently, we are at rock bottom, and our relationship has really suffered from issues I won't get into. But I can't help but feel like my vision board that I look at every day and my manifestations are pulling me away from my marriage. Does this sound absolutely crazy, or could manifesting be pushing me out of my current relationship to find the qualities I feel are missing? I think... I think that it's not necessarily even manifesting. I think it's just knowing what you want out of life. Yeah. And you put what you wanted out of life on paper and you don't have those things. So every day you look at them, it's a reflection of, oh, I'm in an unhappy marriage. Yeah. And it's not to say you can't get there. I think you guys would really need to work on it. And maybe it's even worth like sitting down with him and being like, I made this vision board and these are the things that I want out of our relationship and we are not in a good place and like how could we get here and can we get here because I'm just feeling like I'm looking at these things and this is what I want out of my partner and out of my marriage and we aren't checking any of these boxes and to me that just it's not sitting right with me like either you know you made that commitment to get married so it's like are you going to work through it together or you also said in the beginning that you've kind of had this weird feeling ever since getting married so I don't know maybe that's that's your gut right there telling you that this was a choice that wasn't meant to be for you yeah that's what I was gonna say I wonder if she's shared those Mm -hmm. manifestations with him and been like this is what I want and not and I'm not getting it um because I feel like if you did share it with him then like maybe you guys could have A bit of an open and honest conversation about why you can't get there and or if it is possible. But yeah, I mean, if you feel like that's something you wanted in the beginning and you didn't even have that like before you guys got Mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering maybe she just like, did she say how old she was? No, she didn't. Mm. I'm wondering if maybe she just like rushed into a marriage because maybe family or social like yeah stuff stuff that make yeah. yeah um but yeah you should never go into a marriage without communication or or what was that th- what were some of the other like trust connection yeah. I just yeah I thanks like yeah if he's not like if you guys aren't like always constantly like doing stuff for each other it's like being open and honest with each other yeah i I mean i don't want to be like get a divorce but i also though think your gut feelings are a really strong thing and you said you almost regretted marrying him instantly Mm. which to me like again i don't want to be like get a divorce but before you have kids i don't Mm. know if you do with him but maybe it's easier before you make even more family but you can't like ignore your gut screaming at you yeah and then it'll just like consume you yeah and I think the thing that's really important when you're in a relationship is knowing that it takes two people to work hard on something you can't be the only one wanting to put work into your relationship you need the other person to meet you there because you could be doing all of these things getting all the self-help going to therapy doing self-improvement but if the other person isn't willing to meet you there you're just going to be spinning your wheels and it's never going to properly work unless the two of you put in the same amount of effort and want the same outcome so I think it's important to know if I'm going to put in all this work to make these dreams become a reality is he also willing to do this work Mm. and maybe that's why sitting down with him and saying these are the things I want out of our relationship he might be like I can't give you those things or we're never going to get there right like so I think it's just about having like that open honest communication and figuring out if you guys are going to be able to get there together yeah okay next question 
Ask Alyssa, I am hoping this is the right place to submit this question. I'm a 22-year-old college senior, but with two more years at the same school for my second degree, so I'm not getting out any time. My question is about hookup culture slash advice. I know I don't want a relationship. That's why I ended my last one. I want to be single, but I don't want to be as dry as the Sahara Desert. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a shy girl. I really don't mind making the first move in person or virtually, but things seem to never go anywhere with the guys I talk to. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or maybe I just give off relationship energy when I don't mean to. Any advice from your college days? Or should I try to focus on the big picture and not waste my energy? P.S. Love the pod. It makes my week every time your interviews are fantastic. And the advice is my favorite part. Yay. Oh, and then she said the celebrity section slash combo with Gia is like chatting with besties. Oh, I love that. Such a brilliant combo. Thank hmm. you. Um, That's like shocking to me. Because I feel like in college, all guys ever want is just to hook up. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Like, I don't know if I dealt with this because if anything, I was like, marry me. And they were like, hook up with me. (laughs) Yeah, if anything, I was like begging for guys to like be like, can I see you again? You know what I mean? Like, that that is surprising. I wonder what she means by relationship energy because maybe she's, they're like, she's going on dates and she's like... (laughs) Like acting too interesting. Okay, so I think I kind of give relationship energy off. I get that. Because I, I'm like, I'm so annoying. So like I was <laughs> always brought up to be like, let the guy chase you. Don't. So I would, I had this weird thing. Like I almost have like too strong of morals when it comes to dating. That if a guy isn't like courting me, I'm like, I want nothing to do with you. So I would go into dates very much being like, well, I'm not going back with you unless you text me, do this, do that. Like, I would set these, like, ground rules. And then I think guys are kind of like, are you trying to marry me? Right. They take that as the wrong impression. But in my head, I'm just like, I want you to respect me if you're going to expect me to, like, hook up with you. Yeah. But I would almost put forth this, like, (laughs) you got to work for me attitude. (laughs) But then it's like, if they don't want to date you, like, they're not going to put in the work. Yeah. I, I... (laughs) <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Yes. I feel like, not that I... <laughs> you do it too. <laughs> no. I'm kind of the opposite. <laughs> I don't want to say like, oh, I gave it up Like easy, I'm so easy. Yeah. But I I always would, if I would, I mean, I barely ever hooked up with guys in college, but like if I did, I kind of always, my in the back of my head, like I would romanticize and be like, oh, like he's going to text me like, and he'd be like, oh, I'll see you soon. I'd be like, oh, like he's going to, like we're, we're going <laughs> to... Yeah. I'd be like, oh, like, he likes me. Like, you know, like, I think this is going to go somewhere. And it always never went anywhere. And I think, like, I don't know what it was, but I I always just, like, hope for the best and never expected the worst. And then when it happened, I was just like, oh, shit, like, they don't like me? Like, I'm confused. You just (laughs) kind of expected they would. Yeah, exactly. So it's – I always, like, I've never been – a hookup person Me where I just like hook up with random people because yeah. I like to have like a little bit of a connection also, with someone. Also like mine's more like making out. Like Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, I don't know. That's just, it's just surprising to me that she is having a hard time like finding guys that like just want to hook up because I feel like especially in college that's all I got was guys that just wanted to hook up yeah if you're saying you don't want a relationship I feel like the go-to was just like drunk at the club dance floor make dance floor yeah yeah like you should just I don't know though because I'm also like her where she's like I'm not shy like if I like a guy or like drunk I'll like flirt with them I'm I'm literally so like awkward or aggressive awkward oh I thought you're gonna be like i'm aggressive no oh my god if a boy like looks at me and i look at him i'm like uh oh no what if does I'm that mean drunk, i don't I'm know like, yeah i i wish i was more not like as that. much anymore like in yeah. college i mean it took me like two months to make a move on my boyfriend i literally <laughs> i just could not do it for the life of me even if i would if i was drunk i would like text him with like the dis- disappearing message being like hi so it would go that's, away yeah, yeah, that's like me making a move Oh my God. See, I'm so annoying. I'm like, it's kind of good though that we're opposite because like this girl might fall somewhere in between, but I think it's just like, honestly, be yourself. Like, I think just stop pretending to like, 
be girlfriendy or if, if I had to give myself any advice it would be to loosen up with like trying to get guys to like respect me so much like obviously that's such an admirable thing but like at 19 am I really trying to marry someone like yeah I was so like my dad told me once and I've said this pot this story on the podcast so many times I told him about a date that I was on about how the guy said I was prim and proper and my dad said you sound like a fucking loser he was like loosen up and this is coming from my dad like he was like you sound boring yeah and I was like yeah but I'm trying to be like you could take me home to your mom who cares? You're in co- like yeah. so maybe you're putting forth like that girlfriend energy, but like just be yourself. Yeah. Just and if you're just up. looking for hookups, like just keep going out, go to the bars, have fun, and you'll you are bound to find someone. And yeah. I'm sure like a guy like yeah, you you just have to, just don't worry like- too much about like oh like I'm trying to like hook up with all these guys. Like it'll come naturally. Just go out, have fun. Don't worry about like if a guy's gonna hook up with you that night or not. I feel like if you go out with the expectation of like, oh, I really want to hook up with someone tonight, you're not gonna. And I feel like in college, like, it's free reign to, like, hook up with, like, the whole, like, lacrosse team or, like, <laughs> like kiss. Like, you don't have to just stick to one. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, totally. You could mm, just have fun. Yeah, with a friend. Like, it doesn't even matter. Like, just, yeah. like, like, go out, kiss some boys, and, like, yeah. live your best single life. Yeah, agreed. Wow, I really miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> I miss college so much. I, I don't shut up about how much I miss it. I loved college. Like, loved it. And I'm like, oh, I've been out of college for so long, and I still feel like those are my glory days. Yeah, I I loved it my junior, senior year. My freshman, sophomore year, uh, I went to Michigan State, mm. and being from New Jersey, like, there's – I was the only one in my graduating class so like my freshman year was brutal really oh um, yeah meeting people like even after I rushed it took me like pretty much to the end of my freshman year to find a group of girls that I really liked mm. and I remember being at orientation like all these people had like these friend groups and I was like was I supposed to bring my friends to <laughs> orientation I like, like I'm actively so, come yeah <laughs> exactly like I was so confused so it took me a, and being I, th- I thought I wanted to be far from home and then once I was far from home yeah. I was like shit I actually really miss being home so it took me like a solid two years to finally feel like I was fully settled in and I was like enjoying my life and then you school. loved it and then yeah I it just took me one semester because the first semester I was like I'm transferring I hate it yeah and then like second semester I was like I love it because yeah. I met my best friends who I'm so excited my college friends who don't live in New York City are coming to my live show oh, all fun. of them like we're still so like mm-hmm. we're like sisters because like, yeah. when you live with that many people we're just like besties totally. um so I hope I hope we answered your advice let's spill the tea a little bit because there are some things I want to discuss listen last night Grammys anything really notable to talk about not really like I'm kind of just sick of like everyone licking each other's tongues um <laughs> yeah your stories are funny it is what it is like I don't know if that's like the way emo boys kiss they just like lick lick each other's I really tongues. think that they're just doing it for press like they get the attention when they do it so they do it every single time because they know people are going to talk about it 100 100- percent but it's like we know we've seen it also like addison ray like i think she was going in for the kiss and her boyfriend just licked her teeth ew because i think he was like let's be like courtney courtney and travis yeah courtney i just called them Courtney's. um mgk meant megan fox have been kind of quiet you uh, know yeah, that is true well I, mgk has been like having like weird like he did you see that video that he posted on tiktok or something he was like i'm not emo enough for you <laughs> you didn't think i'm emo enough and he's like putting like black oh, yeah. eyeliner on and stuff yeah i don't know maybe he's going through it or something I, I love the resurgence of the emo men because i was a fellow emo girl like census fail reliant k like i i loved it i went to warp tour i crowd surfed during my chemical romance like okay guys we ran into a little issue so if things sound a little segmented maybe it won't on your end but gia's mic isn't working because i don't know like some electrical issue we don't know what it is the it guys were trying to help us figure it out but it's just me for right now so i think where i left off i was talking about um oh i was saying mgk and megan fox like haven't been around as much lately and how i personally love the resurgence of emo guys because I was really big into the emo world when I was in like seventh grade I want to say like all of middle school so I'm loving it Um, I'm really enjoying it 
But as far as the Grammys go, I don't really feel like there was anything super notice like notable other than just the stuff we see online, like the stuff that the celebrities wore, the weird ways that they acted on the carpet. Um, but I wanted to tell you guys about the show that's like really okay. It's a Hibley. All of the shows that I'm about to tell you that I love are all Hibleys. If you're new here, Hibley is hate it but love it. It's when you really hate something so much that you actually start to kind of love it. And that's how I feel about most of the television shows that I watch. So the show is called Is It Cake? Um, It's like (laughs) basically contestants make cakes to look like real life objects and then a panel of judges have to guess if it's real or if it's cake and these cakes look legitimately so realistic that like I can't even tell which one's which um it's kind of one of those good just like mindless shows if you just want something in the background um it's just like it's it's entertaining it's light it's fun I think it's I think it's amazing. Um, the other show that's a huge hibbly for me is Temptation Island. Um, I'd say it's more of a love it, less of a hate it. I really, really love Temptation Island. Basically, a bunch of couples um, who are having problems in their relationships go to an island and they get tempted to hook up with other people. And like you'd be surprised by like how quickly these people fold at the first sign of like temptation they're making out with the stranger um it's so I think it's so good I think you guys everyone needs to watch it if you like dating shows it's so much like juicier than The Bachelor I just I think it's like really really fun to watch and as you guys start watching it and as we get more familiarized with the names of everyone we could talk about it more because truth is I don't know one person's name right now And then the last thing I want to talk about is the entire thing that went on with Rob Kardashian, Black China, and Tyga. So basically, Rob had, no, Ty, wait, wait, wait. I'm going backwards. I'm like doing it in reverse order. Black China put out a tweet being like, it's really hard to be a single mother alone with no help. And then Tyga was like, "Um, I pay $40,000 a year for our son's school and I have him every day except one day of the week so then Rob commented and was like I pay $37,000 and I have our daughter dream every day of the week except two days of the week so I don't really know what you're talking about and then Black China just responded and she was like lol (laughs) but now she's like going on this rant on Instagram stories being like when I go to court to 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 fart oh my gosh when I go to court to fight Chris and the Kardashian girls, people will know the truth, what they put me through. Um, And my kids will be proud that I like stood up for myself. So apparently she's taking the Kardashians to court um, because she said they canceled a show opportunity that she had, which I don't know if she's talking about her show with Rob, but like they're not together anymore. So it would only make sense that that show ended. So I feel like this is just the beginning of like the black China drama coming back into our lives and I'm curious to see how it will unfold but what I think is really interesting is that the men have the kids most of the week so I don't know I feel like that's interesting because usually the court grants the mom most visibility so we'll see how this all plays out the Kardashians have the best lawyers in the world so I honestly probably see it going in their favor just because I feel like that's what they do but we will see and we will get justice and learn the truth but yeah that's it for today's episode thank you guys for tuning in sorry that we had that little issue here at the end um the guys in the in the what's it called like the equipment control room room. (laughs) the guys in the control room will get to, to the bottom of it so this doesn't happen again um but I will see you guys this week in New York um and if not I will see you on my vlog And we'll talk next week. Thanks, guys.